Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, brought to you by Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all four major sports and things to do with those four major sports, you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. All right. Today we're going to be talking about the potential for Montreal to be making a whole boatload of trades, like lots and lots, um, and the reasons why that is, and who they may trade, and who may they may get in return, and all of that fine for all. If you want to talk more about this with me, one-on-one, well, lots of people on one, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show I do from 3 to 5 Eastern, and it's an interactive show where you can go talk about whatever team you want to talk about anytime. We will stop and talk about it with you. Got a whole bunch of people there that know hockey really well, and we love to talk about hockey. Um, okay, so this is coming from an article from Mr. Parsons, who writes for the Hockey Writers. And it's, uh, it's a very interesting article, but I took one particular piece to kind of show why I believe that uh, Montreal will, first of all, be trading players. And one of the players that they will be trading is Jeff Petrie. So I'm going to trade Jeff Petrie to five teams that I think are possible to be traded to and talk about what the likelihood of that may be. Um, they'll, I'll be doing other videos like this. Probably the next one will be Gallagher. They got a very interesting piece on that there too. But let's go look at Petrie to whoever it may go and why. Okay, so this is the article. Um, It is not expected that Jeff Petrie will want to go through a rebuild. His quotes from Jeff Petrie, when you're further in your career like I am, time becomes an issue, he said. Bernier writes that a proposal to look elsewhere could certainly come from him, but he's having a difficult season and it's becoming much less attractive on the trade market with his current salary. I agree and disagree with that. Yes, he's having a difficult season, um, but I'm pretty sure managers are go all, managers in the league out there that are looking for defense. And we know, even with the cap space and everything, come the deadline time, guys like Petrie are looked much sought after. And actually, his contract ain't that bad, uh, especially for how well he did last last year. I'm pretty sure general managers are going to be fairly sympathetic to what Petrie has been going through this year with the loss of Price, uh, Weber, all of those, the Weber basically retiring, Perry leaving. The team has just been upside down. It's, it's pretty easy to be sympathetic to the fact that he's not having that great of a season, especially after he was almost having a Norris level season last year. I'm pretty sure general managers will forego the possibility or the fact that he's not having a great season this year. Um, uh, down here, it talks about how Gallagher could be in there and why, and we're going to get into that in our next one. But let's look at some of the places that he may go, and we'll first look at that contract that they're talking about. He is Jeff P Petrie is 33 years old. Uh, like I said, he's a big boy, plays big, plays, can play offense, can play the power play, can play the penalty kill. He has made himself into one heck of a defenseman. He's getting 6.2 for the next three years until he's 35 years old. And honestly, that is not bad for a guy who can play top two minutes on, on a lot of teams. I don't think teams are going to be too swayed by his contract till he's 35. Yes, there may be, be some decline there, maybe, but we're going to be trading them to teams that are looking at winning now, mostly. So I'm not really worried about it too much, and I don't think they're worried about it too much. Let's first look at the Islanders. Uh, also, what would Montreal be looking for here? Pretty much anything young, draft picks, prospects, anything they can get of that, that nature. Maybe taking a player back to make the cap work. And all of that. So let's first look at the New York Islanders, who I think would be in here like a dirty shirt. And I know that the Islanders fans out there are going, no, 
We don't need any more old people. And I would agree with you, actually. But I'm putting the Islanders in there simply because of the way Lamorello has worked so far. <laughs> they've dropped, they've traded for and acquired and brought in old people. Palmieri, 30. Peugeot, which is now 29 years old. He wasn't that old when they first brought him in, but he's still an older guy. And of course, Parise at 37 years old. Uh, and Chara, the oldest guy in the league. This is a team I don't think is going to give up on this season, for one. They need depth. They don't want Sebastian Ajo playing all that many minutes. They really don't have very good replacement players for guys when they get hurt. And he does have three years left on the contract, so he'll be there for three years. They probably have about a three-year window here. These guys are all getting – Anders Lee's 31. Bailey's 32. Bailey might even be part of this deal to make the cap work. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Kiefer Bellows is young, but he's not really progressing all that well. So their window is closing already. And I think they're going to go for it. And I think just feels like Petrie is the kind of guy that they would be all over. And in the end, let's face it, they would be a better team with Petrie, no, no matter how you want to cut it for now. Anyways, they would be a much better team with Petrie. What would go back? The aforementioned Kiefer Bellows could be part of that deal. Uh, uh, Scott Mayfield, because he's a righty, they wouldn't need Mayfield quite as much. Maybe that would be a guy. Montreal loves their big defenseman, 6'5", 223. They love him. Uh, and when Pulak comes back, Mayfield would be down here on the fourth. I think they would prefer not to have people in the lineup go back if they don't have to, except for a guy like Bailey, who they tried to give away at the – in the expansion draft anyways. But if they were to give up Bailey, I do think it would cost them a heck of a lot of prospects. Uh, I think pretty much all the prospects they have because they don't have too much. And that probably would prevent this deal to begin with. They don't really have a lot of prospects. It's going to cost their first, maybe Kiefer Bellows, and uh, maybe Sebastian Ajo, something like that. So this would be a go for it move for the Islanders. So Islanders fans, tell me what you think about that. I have a feeling I know what you're going to think about that. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you'll love Petrie. I don't know. Take, tell me about it. Minnesota. Minnesota is interesting because they are just doing so well already this year. They're uh, top one of the top teams in the West. Uh, fantastic coaching. Uh, could use, I believe... Some depth on defense. They are John Merrill is having this out of body experience right now on left defense. For for them, he's never been this good. The Dean Evison is I don't know. He's a magician. He's a he's a hockey player whisperer. He turns everybody into freaking amazing players. Like Ryan Hartman, twenty one points in twenty five games. This guy couldn't get nothing done in Nashville. Nothing done in Philadelphia. Wasn't really doing much in Minnesota until Epheson shows up, and now all of a sudden he's a, almost a point game player. Incredible. But anyways, they could I could see them going for it this year a little bit and taking a guy on like Petrie. You could move Goligoski over to the left, who actually is really good on the left hand side. Play Petrie along with Goligoski. That's beautiful, man. <laughs> that is a beautiful combination. And of course, when you get when we get uh, Spurgeon back, you'd have Spurgeon, Brodin, Goligoski, Petrie, and Dumba can move down here and play with Kulikov, who normally is supposed to play on the left hand side. That is a pretty solid D, my friends. Very solid. If they think they have a chance for a cup this year, I could see them working on that. Now I know what you're going to say: cap room next year. What are we going to do with cap room? Well, what are you going to do to send back to them too? You can't just take them for nothing. Um, one thing you could do, one thing we could do is for cap room for now, because I do believe they got like a million or two in cap room. Let's take a look at it right now. Let's look at the cap room right now. Current cap space 2.4. So you don't need to lose all that much cap room to be capped out in this deal. Um, but you could offer up Victor Rask. Not that they really want him or anybody really wants him, but it would make the cap work. 
Then you're looking at prospects, though. You're looking at good prospects, too. You're looking at guys like, okay, not Rossi, but defensemen like uh, Ryan O'Rourke, Carson Lambeau, both left defensemen, uh, somebody like that in a first-round pick. Maybe uh, Marek uh Vak Vaklav first off, <clears throat> guys like that. Not all of these guys, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm not saying all of these guys, but if you're if we're gonna lose, if you're gonna give up, uh, if if you're gonna actually give up, which is basically doing yourself a favor, Victor Rask. In that deal, it's more leverage for Montreal to say, okay, we're going to watch something really good here. I personally would be pining for O'Rourke over Lambos myself. Uh, I don't know if Minnesota would be too happy with that, and it would completely depend on where they think they are for running for the Cup this year. I, If they believe that they can win a Cup this year, I have a feeling they'll do it. Now, the next thing you're going to talk about is what about next year with the cap, right? I know. I hear you out there. I hear you asking the questions. Uh, what about the cap next year? Well, it can still work next year. And there's one reason for this. And, well, there's several reasons for it. But one of them is I don't believe they're going to be able to re-sign Kevin Fiala. I think Kevin Fiala is playing down lower in the lineup a lot, and I don't think he's too happy with it. It's hurting his numbers, and when they go into negotiations, Fiala is going to say, I'm a second-line right winger, top-line right winger on a lot of teams, and I want to be paid like it. And we know with the Parise buyout and Suter buyout, they have $6 million, $12 million on the cap next year. I don't think Fiala is going to fit. So as it stands right now, though, They've got 12 million projected cap space next year, even with that. So, and we just got rid of Victor Rask. No, that was part of it. Sorry. That's part of the cap space that they have. So you trade Fiala, keep Petrie at 6 million for the next couple of years. You got to remember, this is a top pairing defenseman at $6 million a year. So this team is looking solid defensively for a while. Um, the next question would be uh, Talbot's in for three and six next year, and then you can start working on the rest of the contracts that you need to take care of as they go, which aren't that many. Oh, look at that. Hart oh, Hartman's good. Greenway won't be getting that much. You can fit him in. You can fit him in for the next couple of years. So tell me what you guys think about that. Again, think about it. Trading Ryan O'Rourke, maybe a first round pick. Uh, next year. Tough to swallow. It is tough to swallow, but if I think if Minnesota really wants to be a cup contender, they need to help. Uh, they're not going to be able to roll with guys like Merrill in the playoffs, I don't believe, and be able to compete against the Lightnings and uh, you know, gold, the Vegas Golden Knights aren't going to drop the ball again. They're going to have Eichel in the lineup. Think about who you're competing with. Tell me what you think. Minnesota fans, should you go for it now or just hold out and let this team grow? Uh, Boston Bruins, I imagine, would be in the conversation. Uh, the only thing about the Boston Bruins is that they already have Carlo and McAvoy on the right-hand side. They're really, a left defenseman is what they would be looking for. However, if there's nothing out there, they're a team that I think should be going for it this year. They could offer up Clifton, and of course we all know about Jake DeBrusque, right? Asking for that trade and a first-round draft pick next year and see if maybe maybe Jacob Zaboral. I mean, they could put a package together. Jacob Zaboral is progressing into a pretty decent defensive defenseman, probably a 5'6". He's young. Uh, package all that together to get a Petrie. You know, Carlo can play down with Riley, Petrie with Greslick. I like that sound of that. Uh, and you've got somebody that can play on the power play with McAvoy a little better. He could he'd probably be able to work on the left-hand side on the power play anyways. But not a bad addition. Tell me, I, I don't think, I don't know if it's really what Boston needs needs, but if they're really going for it, I could see them going for more than this but also going for this. So I put him in there. Next, 
the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yes, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Imagine if the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens made a trade like this. It would be something. But I think every defenseman out there that's available, a lot of the defensemen, Toronto's going to be in the mix to be able to pick up more depth on D. I, I really do. I really do think so. Who would they have in return? Well, you're again, you're going to have cap space issues here. No doubt about it. So they're going to have to look at guys like Andrew Kerfoot, maybe. Uh, and then their first round draft pick next year, Timothy Lilligren, a past first round pick. Um, Cause Sandine will be back. He's hurt, but he'll probably be back. I don't know how long he's going to be out for, but it even makes it more pressure, really, to get a guy like Petrie. When he comes back, you then have Muzzin. Uh, you could put Petrie here, hole down here with Sandine, and you got what's looking like a pretty decent D-line. Petrie and Muzzin, are, that's a top-pairing defenseman def- defense on a lot of teams. Um, you've got two top pairing D, D, D there now in Toronto where we're talking about D problems and depth problems. And you're going for it this year. I mean, this team is freaking flying right now. So why not give up your first? Uh, they give up their first. Maybe uh, Lila Grin, Joseph Wall. I don't know if they want to get a defenseman or a goaltender there. It's a possibility. Um, Joey Anderson. Hasn't really been progressing the way they would like, but they could give him a shot in Montreal. They could throw a package together here to bring a guy like Petrie. They're going for the cup. They're going for the cup right now. There's no waiting around in Toronto, right? What do you guys think, Toronto fans? What would you give up for a guy like Petrie? Am I just talking out of my butt or what? And next, oh, that's Boston. So we are going for... Vancouver Canucks. Uh, this is an outside chance that they would they would give this a shot. Um, they're not, of course, a contender this year, but they are trying to be a contender. I don't see a rebuild coming here. Um, I can't see where's Jeff Petrie from, by the way. I thought he oh he's from Michigan. So, uh, but they desperately need defense there so bad, and I don't believe they're rebuilding. I don't believe the coach. That the general manager that's going to be working there is going to be looking at this as a rebuild. Uh, difficult cap wise, but if you were going to salvage this defense at all, a guy like Petrie would do it. And who would go back? I'd be trying to get them to take Tyler Myers. If they, because they love big defensemen there. I like they're blind in Montreal. I don't know if Gordon's going to allow, you know, fall for that. But if you could get rid of Tyler Myers and you know, then you'd have to throw something really good in there. If you're going to toss in Tyler Myers, they're going to have to go down their prospects and really give something special because I don't believe that Gordon's going to be fooled by Tyler Myers and himself. Tyler Myers has not played all that well. But if they're willing to give up something really good, like do you really need a Nils Hoglander as much as I like him? Do you need him? You already got Gar- they they already have Garland, um, you know Nils Har- Hoglander Myers and a first round pick, something like that. Montreal might be interested in something like that. They have too many small players as it is. Uh, Garland can play up, and you can start looking to, for other players to fill in your bottom lines. Tough call, but. I think something has to be done with this defense. That's why I put Vancouver in there. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give today. Tell me what you think about these fine trades uh, and and where they're going. What do you think Montreal is going to do? Do you think they're going to do the rebuild like this? I mean, there is a lot of guys that could be going. Now, also, I did a short, and I asked you to tell me, Foley go? Where would you, who, if you like to Foley, where would he go? What would you do a trade for to Foley? That was an interesting. I got a short, go check it out on my, on my channel. Also come see me at the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, which I got to get ready for right now. Three to five Eastern weekdays. Love to see you there. Have a great day, everybody. Okay. Bye.